welcome you today to the celebration of life of one of God's true angels, Deacon Fama Abraham. We are so very thankful that you have come here to be with the family as we celebrate what for us in the Presbyterian Church is the assurance of the resurrection. This is a service of witness of resurrection unto eternal life. And we're so doing it, we're not going to let any type of traffic or car stop us <laughs> in praising God for a life well lived, a person whose labor and whose fruits will continue to speak even as she is among the ancestors. So receive now our call to worship from John 11 25. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. So let's join together in the great hymn of the church, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. The words are on the back of your program. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Two peas in a pod. 
We knew that they would always be together. And even though the physical death has separated them, certainly her spirits and their spirits are always intertwined. But be with Brother James right now, God, as he begins to relearn his world without his wonderful wife physically present in it. We ask a special blessing on Allison and Alexis and Adam, Lord God, even as they begin to chart a different journey, God, without their mother physically in it. We pray right now that those wonderful memories, those happy memories, would be that which would give their heart joy. When in the midnight hour it seems that sadness and darkness will overtake them, we pray, Lord God, that you would send joyful memories, that you would send a sweet song in that sweet spirit. We say thank you for all of the ways in which she endeavored in this school system and all of the students that she touched, be it while she was employed as well as as she consulted. We say thank you for all of the seeds that were planted and the ways in which they were watered in your name. And we ask even right now that you will continue to allow us to have that spirit that spirit of Deacon Famer. The spirit of a true Deacon that cares for your people, that is able to reach them when they may think they're unreachable. For in so carrying that spirit, we continue to carry her. Comfort, comfort your people. Comfort, comfort this family. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen to this beautiful family, friends that are here with us today, and to this community. We thank God for Day. May you be comforted by these words that have been so lovingly selected. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 8 tells us, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under earth. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, What is planted? A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and tear and, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare 
has the table before me in the presence of my enemy. I anointed my head with the oil. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. May the Spirit be brought over as you turn. Is the gift of love found in 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 through 13? If I speak in the tongue of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or clinging symbol. And if I have prophetic power and understand all mysteries all knowledge, and if I have no faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all of my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. And as for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we not only know in part, and we prophecy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But I became an adult. I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly. But then we shall see face to face. Now I know only God. But I will know God. Even as I have fully known. And now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. May God add a special message to the healing of our world. And may you be blessed and carry this world with you. Not only today, tomorrow, in the coming months, and in the coming years. Allow God to help you.
O Lord our God, open our ears, that we might hear your word speaking to us in this moment. Open our ears, O God, that we might listen for your voice calling us through scripture. Open our ears, O God, that we might understand your promises to follow us, both old, young, Open our hearts, O oh God, that we might enter into the love you offer. Speak, O oh Lord, for your servants are listening. Amen. The text that I have chosen for today, you have heard it uh, read in its entirety a little earlier, but I will remind you of it. It comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Everything has its time. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter of the world. Time to be born, time to die. Time to plant, time to pluck up what is good. Time to kill and time to heal. Time to break down and a time to build up. A time to be and a time to live. A time to live. A time to dance. This is the word of God for the people. As has been stated earlier, I want to reiterate welcome friends to the service of remembrance and celebration of life. In the Reformed Presbyterian tradition, this worship experience is referred to as a service of witness to the resurrection. Based on the physical resurrection of Jesus from the dead and the promise of life to come for all who believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. So the witness to the resurrection of our beloved Thayer Louise Powell Abel affirms God's power over death and the belief in the resurrection to life everlasting. So as you participate in this worship service today, my prayer is and my hope is that you will receive the absolute bottom line good news that Jesus Christ has conquered death and the grave for us. Had it not been for Calvary and the empty tomb, we would not be able to claim witness to the, to the resurrection. There would not be any certainty of hope which God gives us for life now and for our everlasting life to come. Please consider with me this morning God's gracious time. God's gracious time. that for everything there is a season and for every every matter under the sun today that matter is death many people think that the story of human life is birth life and death but for us as christian believers it's different the story is not birth life and death but rather life death and life or life death and resurrection the reality is that death does not have the last word and then life does life has the last word the reality is that death is not the last period after the last sentence in the last chapter of our human story there is another chapter that is coming death is not the end of our story or rather the middle the end of the story 
is what gives the certainty of hope for the future that resurrection and life have no end. So let's farewell today, Saturday, May 14, 2021. Based on God's gracious timing, is only a temporary farewell. The burial that will take place shortly for our dearly departed is a temporary burial. Because she will rise, she will live. Because that's what the cross and that's what the resurrection are all about. For us through the blessed gifts of love, God's grace and God's mercy. God has already literally removed Thelma Louise Howe Aven from the dominion of death and has transferred her into the kingdom of eternal life. It was on this very day that Christ said to her, you do not and you never will belong to death, you belong to me. Therefore, Thelma has not merely died, but she has died in Christ. Therefore, having lived and died in Christ, we know with certainty, we know with certainty of our faith that she will rise again in Christ. All of this is because of God's choice, God's control, and God's gracious timing of everything in God's vast and boundless creation. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that there are some things that I don't have to place on my reminder list on my phone to keep me going because my God is large and in charge and his timing never malfunctions. The first thing that we need to understand about God's timing is that it is perfect. God's timing is perfect. Just as all of God's ways are perfect, God's timing is never early, nor has it ever been late. In fact, from our birth, from before our birth, to the moment that we take our last earthly breath, our sovereign God is accomplishing his divine purposes in our lifetime. God is in complete control of everything, everyone, every intricate detail of our lives from everlasting to everlasting. No event in history has put so much wrinkle in the time of God's eternal plan, which he designed before the foundation of the world, including the time of your death and mine. Now you would think that by understanding the sovereignty of our creator, the urge not to ask why would come a little more easy. Unfortunately, however, that's not the case. Our human nature automatically makes us curious and disappointed sometimes about God's perfect timing. A major key to understanding God's timing is trust. In fact, our ability to accept God's gracious timing is largely related to how much we trust God. Trusting in the Lord with all our hearts and not relying on our own often incorrect understanding of circumstances gives rise to God's unfailing love that will surround those who trust God and God's timing. To fully trust God, however, we need to know God, not know about God, but we need to know God. And the best way to know him is through his word. God's word, which lives through his inspired word, teaches and guides and trains and protects and strengthens us and makes us wise so that as we meditate on God's gracious timing of all things in this life will also become to us. When we question God's timing, it's often because we are unhappy about a situation 
that has occurred, be it death or something else, that took us by surprise. But church, I want to assure each of us today, especially James, Allison, Alexis, and Adam, and extended family and friends, that our heavenly creator knows exactly where we are in our lives at every moment in time. God either places us there or is allowing us to be there for all of his own perfect purpose. In fact, God very often uses trials, tragedy, and even death to straighten us, allowing our Christian faith to mature and to become complete. Death's timing is a mystery. It intrudes into our lives and snatches away our loved ones. And sometimes we feel desperate to have the need to understand why. We sift through clues, search for evidence, and examine all of God's possible motives for seizing our love. Even if or when death is imminent, such as a recent illness or hospice care is present, we are looking for answers to our questions. We're looking for answers that make sense, but we find precious little to none. Yet like Solomon, we need to be reminded that there is a time and a season for everything, and we are to savor every moment that we have, treasuring it as a gift from God. God not only created us, put us on this earth to have relationship with us, God's plan does not end at our death. Death is only the gateway to God's true design for all humanity. So let me take you on a journey. I can only imagine Fama, Louise, how Aven and have taken this particular journey. On the day of Saturday, May the 1st, 2021, when she passed away. I can imagine that in her transition, she was aware of a brilliant light enveloping her and then realized that she was in fact standing in heaven. She became aware of a group of people standing in front of a brilliant and beautiful gate. The crowd rushed towards her and she was able to recognize people that had died during her lifetime. The first person that she saw was her own dear mother who embraced her. The crowd surrounded her with some hugging and others kissing or shaking her hand. One person in the greeting committee was her dear and beloved father, Mr. Feynman, Feynman Howard. She saw one Hilda and Uncle John and many others who were a true sight for longing eyes. The smile that we all remember was so glistening all over and Miss Louise and Mr. Fama and Fama danced and embraced and danced and embraced some more. Everything that Fama experienced was like the first class buffet for the senses because heaven's light and texture defied earthly eyes and explanation. She says this isn't conscious of anything that she has left behind and felt no regrets about leaving that or possession. For God had removed any negative or worrisome from her consciousness. So as she began to move toward that beautiful gate, she was aware of the increasing brilliance of light coming from inside the gate of hell. Then she began to notice the most beautiful and pleasant sounds she had ever heard. With every sound blending and each voice and instrument enhancing the other. These heavenly tunes, 
However, that she is in the Lord's hands. We can be certain that her earthly struggles within the past year have come to an end. We can be certain that because the God we worship is full of grace and mercy, God does the right thing by every person, and his time is superb. Amen and amen. amen. Let's pray. Lord, your timing is so mysterious to us. We admit that we don't understand why you choose to take our love and ones away. We wanted to experience so many things with them, say so many more things. So we search for answers to our questions. But then we come to realize that there are none. Your word says there is a time to see everything. We are ready for a time of joy and peace in the Lord, help us to embrace the time you have given each of us and to make the most of every moment today. Amen. Make us strong to commit ourselves, those we love, to your daily care. In our perplexity, oh God, help us to trust 
where we cannot understand our loneliness. Maybe we give her a favor, trusting you to keep her in your care. Until the eternal Jesus Christ our Lord, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Thank <laughs> you. 